If you're confused about what micro SD card you need to get for your DJI Mini 2 or Mavic Mini or Mini SE for that matter, then this is the video for you. So don't go away. Hey guys, Mike here and welcome back to the channel. So let's get straight into it. When it comes to SD cards for your drone or anything for that matter, your GoPro, your camcorder, do people still have those? Or like the DSLR that I'm recording this video with, you'll need a memory card, most likely an SD card. SD stands for Secure Digital, by Thank the you. way. Thank you. In the case of your drone, you'll need a micro SD card versus a plain vanilla flavored SD card you'll use in, say, a DSLR camera. They don't come in flavors, you know. No, that's, that's, that's right. Now, you may have a few of these things lying around in your house and drawers from older devices that you may think you'll be able to use in your brand new camera or drone. And that may be the case depending on how old those SD cards are. Now, a lot has changed in recent years with regard to the speed that newer devices write or record onto the cards, and older cards may not be able to keep up. For example, the DJI Mavic Mini that came out in October 2019 records data to an SD card at 40 megabits per second. But the Mini 2 that came out in 2020 can record data to an SD card at up to 100 megabits per second. So that means if you have an older card that can just cope with your Mavic Mini's output, it won't work in your Mini 2. You'll get dropped frames or even worse, it might just not record at all. So if you need to buy a new card for your drone, then what do you get? Well, I used to look for cards for my older gear with a speed class of 10 and it would be represented by a circle with a 10 in it printed on the card but now there's a UHS speed class and also a video speed class, and in some cases, all three are printed on the label. It's quite confusing. Luckily for us, the SD Association was formed in the year 2000 to establish common SD standards. Now that was to ensure better compatibility of different manufacturers' cards between devices. I'll show you some key reference charts they've developed that'll help you select which card you need to get, and I'll put a link to the SD Association website in the description below where you can find them yourself. So the key thing you need to understand is what the maximum output or bitrate your device will be trying to record to the SD card. As I said, in the case of the DJI Mini 2, it's 100 megabits per second. Right, so hold on to that number. If we have a look at the chart from the SD Association, their reference table talks about write speeds of megabytes per second, which makes it a bit confusing because we're talking megabits. I've added an extra column for your reference that converts it to megabits. There are 8 bits to a byte, so a card with a write speed of say 6 megabytes per second is the equivalent of a write speed of 48 megabits per second. They set out to standardize things, but it's still a little bit confusing. So back to our Mini 2 that writes at a maximum of 100 megabits per second. If we look at our table, we know that this type of card here wouldn't be fast enough, so we need the next one up. So if you look for a card that has a UHS speed class of 3 or a video speed class of 30, then you'll be fine. Now, as an aside, you may also see on some micro SD cards an A1 or A2. Firstly, as far as taking photos and videos onto your card, you don't have to worry about that at all, just ignore it. But for those of you who are curious, it relates to application speed, and this measures the card's ability to be able to run applications directly off the card itself, and is mainly used by phones that have the ability to do this. You might also see these symbols. Now, all these fancy logos do is refer to the capacity of the card, in terms of how much information they hold. A plain vanilla flavoured SD card. Not flavoured. No, no, again, they're not actually flavoured. A plain secure digital card has up to 2 gigabyte storage capacity. An SDHC or high capacity card can store up to 32 gigabyte. An SDXC or extended capacity card can hold up to 2 terabytes of information. And finally, the SDUC or ultra capacity card can store up to 128 terabytes of information. And for that one, in terms of cost, there's most likely to set you back about the same as a small car. So that's all there is to it. As a benchmark for now, I just look for cards with a UHS speed class of 3 or a video speed class of V30. That'll be enough for now to cover all of your bases. The Mavic 3, for example, can record up to 200 megabits per second. So unless you're recording 8K video or something, this level of card should be just fine. Also, if you look on the DJI website specification sheets for each of their drones, they now include some guidance about what class of card you need, and also lists the brands and cards that they recommend you get to use in their products. Now, while we've been talking about getting the right card for your drone, the method I've outlined will work for any recording device you have. Even camcorders? Yes, yes, even camcorders. Now, many of you know there's a building speculation about the potential release of a Mini 2 SE or Mini 3. 
One of the things that people will be very interested to see when more details are available will be the bitrate and to see if it stays at 100 megabits per second as the Mini 2 currently has. So it'll be interesting to see what the Mini 3 or Mini 2 EC comes out with. Speaking of the Mini 3, check out these videos if you're wondering if you should get the Autel Nano now or wait until the Mini 3 or whether or not the Mini 3 and the Mini FPV that's been rumoured to be coming out this year are actually the same drone. Click on one of those links now and I'll see you over there. Cheers guys.